We tend to like people who put in effort. We're inspired by stories of people succeeding against all odds through hard work and dedication, and we're less impressed with people who are just famous for being famous. All you have to do is show up. Yeah. This also applies to the way we play. Let's say all you do is jump back to get away and throw fireball or jump forward heavy kick sweep, and when the opponent is close, this playstyle has been encapsulated in a meme known as Flowchart Ken, a game plan so basic you can fit it on a sheet of paper. But what makes people rage is that this flowchart is surprisingly effective. The player Gandhi in the previous analysis video won by playing this way. There's something frustrating about losing to the same simple pattern. Oh my god, now I'm getting pissed! And it feels especially annoying to get hit by the same move over and over again. Ow! Would it? This might be why in Smash, hitting someone with the same move in succession makes it weaker and weaker until you do a different attack. It's called stale move negation, or just staling. Regardless, the terrible feeling comes from the fact that your opponent seemingly beat you without doing much or thinking much. You might call them or their character brain dead and say, all they were doing is this one thing. Or maybe you might say, you didn't do nothing. And while you could be right about all that, why should anyone have to use any more brain power than needed to defeat their opponent? Doing certain tasks while brain dead, or at least without much thinking, is often the best way to do it. For example, how much do you think about when to shoot and when not to shoot in the vertical scrolling shooter rated? Hopefully never because you have unlimited ammo, there's no need to reload, 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 and there are no idiot bystanders in the way. Don't shoot! The shooting aspect of this game is something you just do. This mode of thinking that's unconscious, effortless, automatic, and fast is called System 1. System 1 is why it doesn't take long for you to know which of these you'd prefer to eat, and why you can quickly know how to finish the phrase bread and butter. These things are brain dead easy. But the game Raiden has one other button, the bomb button. You only start with three of these, so you need to think about when to use them and when not to. Maybe you'll use them when the bullet hell gets too overwhelming, or maybe you'll save them for a certain boss. This mode of thinking that is conscious, calculating, and slower is called System 2. You need System 2 to handle things like solving 16 times 23 in your head, or deciding which of these you'd rather eat. If you were to think hard about when to fire bullets, but be brain dead about when to use bombs, you probably wouldn't be as good at Raiden. It's good to know when you need to autopilot and when you need to make deliberate choices. But System 2 is uncomfortable because thinking takes effort. It even affects you physically. When thinking hard and slow, your muscles tense up, your heart rate speeds up, your blood pressure rises, and most interestingly, your pupils become dilated. This might be why some poker players wear sunglasses indoors and why lie detectors measure your blood pressure and pulse. Lying requires more thinking because you have to constantly remember what you said to keep your story straight. You really have to calm down. <laughs> what a should I? You'll fail the test. In fighting games, your blood pressure might literally rise from having to remember moves. For new players, your System 2 will be working hard to learn motion inputs. Things like the Dragon Punch motion are especially difficult because it's so unlike anything else you do in life. At least the 360 motion is kind of like churning butter. Well, actually not really. But because Dragon Punches are such powerful anti-airs, people tend to try them every chance they get, even if they mess up a lot. But not DJ Cuber. Now, Lupe Fiasco versus Cubert. All right, let's go. DJ Cubert clearly knows how to do a dragon punch. <laughs> He's got the uppercut after it, everything. But he doesn't do it when his opponent jumps at him. He uses this move instead, crouching hard punch. Yo, Cubert. Oh, he's got Yo, the anti -air? With the This is much easier to do because you just input a direction and a button, and you get pretty damn close to a dragon punch. I mean, Ken's not flying off the ground or anything but it looks close enough and also hits people out of the air. This poor man's Dragon Punch acts as a System 1 alternative to the much harder motion input Dragon Punch. DJ Cubert was smart enough to use the simpler move in tight anti-air situations instead of attempting a motion input he hasn't completely mastered yet. Another anti-air, look at that stun bar, and Cubert, just the defense is so good. Few things take more effort than using your slow thinking System 2 under time pressure and that's when things come out wrong. Oh yeah, Super Nintendo Charmers. But of course, you can practice motion input so much that it becomes fast, easy, and automatic. This means what once required your System 2 to perform can now properly be handled by System 1. 
With practice, some activities can become quick and automatic. But what if you don't want to do the knockoff Dragon Punch and you're not able to consistently do the real one? Some games now give you the option to do a special move with either the motion input or a simple input during a match. In Grand Blue Fantasy Versus, there's a dedicated button you can press with a directional that lets you do simple input special moves, but the downside is that it has a longer cooldown time than the motion input, meaning you have to wait longer until you can use it again. But this doesn't mean the easy input is just for casuals, because the best players use both motion and simple inputs depending on the situation. No matter how good you get at doing the motion input, the simple input requires less time to execute. For example, cooldown time doesn't matter if your move wins the round. Finish. So here's a quick question. A bat and a ball cost $1.10. The bat costs $1 more than the ball. How much does the ball cost? The answer is 5 cents. If the answer of 10 cents came across your mind, you're not unlike over half the Ivy League students who also got this question wrong. Your System 2 was likely just sitting there while System 1 blurted out an intuitive but incorrect answer. System 2 can be notoriously lazy while System 1 can be very eager. It's not that it was a hard question, it's just that System 2 has to get up and tell System 1 to take a back seat for this particular problem. System 2 is in charge of self-control. Anyone who's refrained from eating a slice of pizza or refrained from tossing their controller knows what this feels like. While System 1 is often correct about its quick conclusions such as this equals 4 or this movie's gonna suck, it can make some serious errors of judgment in other cases. But the biggest problem with System 1 is that it's hard, if not impossible, to shut off entirely. If you doubt this, try to play your favorite fighting game with all your buttons reversed. Even if you managed to never press the wrong button, it took more mental energy because System 2 had to step in, meaning tensor muscles, thus higher chance of input error in other ways. There's a reason why countless hours have been spent on button checks at fighting game tournaments. I yeah, swear those button checks, my, oh my god. We so here's a not so quick question. Count how many times the players wearing white pass the basketball. You can pause the video you're watching now, go over to this one, and count for yourself. When you come back with your answer, you may or may not have realized that there was a gorilla that walked through the scene. Even though it was there for 9 seconds, about half the people who were counting the passes in this video did not see the gorilla, which suggests that under System 2, we can be blind to the obvious. Anyone who just sees this video without doing a task will see the gorilla. This explains why some of the best players in the world do not respond with an anti-air when their opponent jumps at them. No anti-air! But what occupies the player's attention are other mentally intensive things like the neutral game going on on the ground. The opponent's jumping attack acts as the invisible gorilla here. Oh boy, that jump oh, is the uppercut! What a great start! This shows that as much as we want to think hard about each situation to make the best decision possible, System 2 takes too much effort to do so. Your brain will be completely fried. But what if you could fry your opponent's brain instead? Fighting game legend Justin Wong is one of the few people who can say they've made a career out of making people lose their patience. Justin, playing super lame. There's only 30 seconds left. So what does Justin do to make people so frustrated? Rare footage of Daigo actually angry. I would say the go-to thing is blocking. Because when you block a lot, um, it gets people mad. Because obviously when people practice fighting games, they, all they do is training mode, practice combos, practice setups. But if you just sit there and block and all they can do is just really like grab or just do a frame trap and then back off, for example, right? I think for them it's like not fun because it's like very dry because you're not giving them what they want. If you have good defense and you just block all day, they will get frustrated. They start blocking with their face. Excellent defense requires your opponent to have self-control because they can't just give into their temptation to go in and attack. I remember I used to play even faster than I do now. I would make really quick mistakes. I'm supposed to think first, but I would want to beat them so bad. I just, I just want to do this, and I want to do this, and I want to do this, and I want to do this. But the way Tekken works, especially at high level, you have to learn how to shut down. You have to see how they react to what you're doing. So yeah, I definitely had to change how I played before because I played way too fast and I wasn't adapting. I was just playing to kill, not playing to break them down slowly. But self-control is an effortful System 2 activity 
And studies by the psychologist Roy Baumeister have suggested that if you force self-control upon yourself like this, your ability to exert self-control lessens for the next challenge. This is called ego depletion, and ego depleted people have been known to succumb quicker to the urge to quit in physical tasks, resisting junk food, and apparently melee matches against Jigglypuff. Oh, he's done. He's done. Probably no fist bump, I'm guessing. And when you lose control, you make terrible decisions like throwing crabs at people. I love Hungrybox play. I love Jigglypuff. Um, but I also see the fact that like other Smash players don't want to play lame. I know Melee is exciting. It's very hype. But all I see is aggressive, Rushdown, Fox, Falco, you know, like those characters. But then you see Hungrybox just timing you out, laming you out. And even just like other Jigglypuffs is just sitting there and just, you know, stalling the clock. And it's, it's smart, man. The fact that that guy got that uh, Ice Climber to Rage Quit, that was great. I love that. I love seeing Rage Quit stuff like that all the time. It's a weird and controversial idea that we all possess some kind of mental energy meter that causes us to lose self-control as it goes down. But effortful thinking actually does cause your blood sugar level to drop. So the question is, would it help to maintain your self-control if you just replenished yourself with more sugar? Baumeister's team tested this by giving subjects an ego-depleting task and then giving them some lemonade. But half the lemonade had real sugar, while the other half had an artificial sweetener, Splenda. When given the next challenge, the ones who had the real sugar actually performed better than the ones with the fake sugar. So does that mean the key to beating defensive players is to have sugar between games? Let's not get too carried away, but it is something to think about. Especially when you get to game 19, final game, final round, and win. <laughs> the idea of either playing brain dead or depleting mental energy all the time understandably doesn't sound like a fun thing to do because it's not. But as you understand the game and meet the right opponents, you'll start to deliberately control your attention instead of mindlessly playing or forcing concentration on each task. Sometimes you'll be so absorbed in a game that you lose track of time, all your worries seem to disappear, and all you can think about is what you're doing in the moment. The thing you're doing can be anything from playing fighting games to video editing. The psychologist Mihai Csikszentmihalyi called this state flow, but you might have heard it referred to as being in the zone. I mean, everything kind of feels in sync. It's like uh, you're feeling good about your shot, your confidence is through the roof. It's the best feeling in the world. Csikszentmihalyi has referred to flow as an optimal experience, and Professor Raj Raghunathan writes that pursuing flow is one of the habits of the highly happy. But in order to reach this state, you need good tutorials. There has to be a, a kind of a clear goal. Good matchmaking. The goal should not be too difficult or too easy, but um, fairly well matched to your skills. And good net code. The activity as you start acting towards the goal should provide feedback immediately. If you look at Csikszentmihalyi's flow chart, you'll notice a sweet spot to achieve flow is at the intersection of high perceived skill and high perceived challenge. But being good at something and facing challenges that match your skill is also how you get better. So does that mean getting good is a key to happiness? Let's not get carried away, but it is something to think about. This was Gerald from Corey Gaming. Thanks for watching and thanks for coming. After four months of grinding, we finally finished our new studio slash fighting game venue in Seoul. Corey Studios will provide video content services in the day and beatdown sessions at night. Make sure to look in the description for details on when we're open, especially when there's a pandemic outbreak. This video is largely based on Thinking Fast and Slow by Nobel Laureate Daniel Kahneman, and it so happens that this video is sponsored by Audible, where you can find this and thousands of other audiobooks, podcasts, and original content. I'm one of those people who gets motion sickness when I read in vehicles, so this service is actually really useful for me. A good audiobook will teach you much more than any video essay, or anything on social media for that matter. If you sign up for a free 30-day trial, you get a free audiobook of your choice along with two Audible originals. Just go to audible.com slash Gaming or text Corey Gaming to the number 500-500. Thanks for all your support and see you next video. So um, I used to play in Chinatown Fair and there was this one time I was playing uh, King of Fighters 98. 
and um, I was playing this character called Kensu, and he's really lame in that version of 98 where he just does a uh, sweep fireball and standing heavy kick is like perfect anti-air. It's also a very big, like large hitbox. So this guy got really mad because I OCB'd him with just, just doing that one sequence. Like I didn't have any combos. I just did sweep fireball. That's all I did. And then um, after that, he actually walked back and then he had a taser and he tased me at the lowest setting. Oh my God, that shit really hurt.